Hello and welcome to episode two of Chat and Share about the Pokemon book. Today, pleased to be joined uh, by Spock, by Ragnar Starlight, Cal, and by Drew from a potato somewhere down south. <laughs> so if if, if yep. Drew cuts out at all, you have to. We're not. We're not. We're just going to not respond to it. We're going to keep going as if um, Drew mm -hmm. may pop in and out as this as this happens. We're going to. We're not going to acknowledge this at all. Okay. Um, how are you all feeling about the Pokemon Cup? Let's start with Drew first while his connection seems to be working. Um, I'm hopeful. I think generally I'm a bit like Dan. I get a little bit excited about matters. Um, I've been a little bit disappointed so far this season, personally. Um, I've not been enjoying PvP anyway. But um, yeah, they've not... Ember and uh, Ionic, or as I like to call it, the Moronic Cup. Um, hasn't really suited me at all. Um, oh, what was the other one that we played yeah. in between? Yeah, that was a bit more of my uh, cup of tea. But um, yeah, this month I'm 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 hopeful, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, Stu, we'll come to you next. Yeah, no, I'm quite looking forward to this cup. Uh, there's been a lot of excitement about this one. I think because there's just a bit more variety than we've had the last couple of months, and I agree that uh, so far the mess have been they've quite quickly distilled down to the same few we're seeing each time. So I think doing something a little bit different and having hopefully a bit more variety of picks, which is it's looking promising on paper. Uh, we'll have to see kind of what teams people in that building. But uh, overall, very optimistic for the cup. So, yeah. Okay. Cal, what about yourself? I made the mistake of spending 500k of my 510k dust <laughs> right before the month started. And now I'm slowly realizing maybe I should have saved some to build some new things and experiment. I mean, hopefully I've got enough on here anyway, but this is quite a spicy silver meta compared to what we're used to. There's a lot of stuff on here. I mean, it's been echoed a few times. There's a lot of stuff on here, which you won't typically see in your open great league matches in your more meta leaning uh, sort of self monthly metas. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see who can make those more shine this month. Yeah. Be I think Beedle's back again, though. No, listen, I think there's so many good answers to Beedle here. I, I, I yeah. don't think Beedle's the player here at all. But all right, so I think so. I, just touching on what you were saying, Stu, about how the meta quickly boils down to the same pace. Like, yes, we've had messes like Ember and like Ionic that, that were suited to the happening. But I think this will be really, this meta will be a really interesting test of how far the player base has come because, like, ultimately, a lot of the people playing now are better players than they were when they were playing three years ago. And so there might just be an element of uh, people knowing what the better picks are, having a better understanding of the game than we did two or three years ago, right? And I think, I think if this meta boils down to the same two or three models being so centralizing, I, I think we can take that as a as a compliment to the player base, to be honest, because this is this looks to me to be like the broadest matter we've had in a long, long time. And if, so if this boils down to the same eight months being on every team, then you know, I, I think that's more a reflection of the player base being a trap than anything else. That's that's my two cents on it. Mm. I I don't think that happens now, but we'll wait and see. No. I think I think with the availability um, the spice lords out there will go full on spice, and I think the more you know, meta people will kind of go safer options, you know, as far as it can be safe. Um, so I think you might see a maximum of three mons this month. Um, oh, on the say on a majority of teams, um, I think. That one perhaps two but we'll, we'll get into I, that as we go on yeah um cal you're up first now we're going in pokedex order in pv oh. ranking order so cal you're going to go first which actually stunned me when i saw that your pick was the highest ranked i wasn't expecting <laughs> yeah that's actually surprised me as well uh okay um so my pick for today is pokedex number 416 the uh, MILF Pokemon, uh, Vespaquin. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> linked to a previous chat, but 
always yes. had on In, the inside, inside, inside show. show. I yeah. wasn't expecting yeah. that. Yeah. No, no, no was okay. that. I mean, he said he was going to do it. I didn't think he would, but you know, that's I, I was originally, I was originally going to pick cast form, but that was too boring because it does look really good. Um, I was just going to talk about how much of the versatile moves that it has, but I actually did that in Architect. So instead of just repeating what I would have said a few months ago, pretty much word for word, I'm going to talk about Vespaquin because I love bug types, and Vespaquin is in fact a bug type. But what sets Vespaquin apart from a lot of the other flying bugs is that it has a really nice variety option in moves. You've got Poison Sting, which is a Mudshot clone. You've got Fury Cutter, which has amazing energy generation and stab. You've got Air Slash, which is really good for farming against opposing bugs, of which there's quite a lot in this meta. You've then got access to something that a lot of bug flies don't have access to, which is a rock type hard hitting move in power gem now there is say is yanma legal in this i believe yanma and yan mega are yeah, yeah so yanma and yan mega are legal and i think they're also pretty solid options due to um ancient power being such a good move but power gem just has a little bit more oomph behind it and you've got an option of going for bug buzz if you don't quite like the rock type move you've got the option of fell stinger if you really want to be a degenerate and rack up your fury cutter or air slash fast move pressure and it's fairly bulky bug flying is an absolutely abhorrent defensive typing but there's going to be so many psychic types running around with the fact that it's completely unresisted i think you talked a lot in one of the previous episodes of how good even something like espion looks and i think it's going to be really important to have some form of consistent bug type damage and something which can, as a bug type, hit back against the many flyers that are present in the meta. You just alluded earlier to Beedrill potentially not, despite being very highly ranked and a very good one in this meta per se, it's got a lot of answers, unlike in Ionic, where everything is very energy based. And so having the option to hit back all of your hard answers, I think, well, that should be quite helpful for it so it doesn't perform well in the sims it is a, a bug flying type it's not generally going to but it performs in the twos quite well just because with either air slash or fury cutter you're going to rack up some nice damage with the spammy x scissors or even the uh even the fell stingers though you likely won't be getting shields off of those but yeah i think it's not necessarily a good one I'm talking about it on chatting shit because it's a bit uh, subversive, but I think it's going to be one of the many spicier picks that I could see a small amount of usage and potentially shine more items. Do you know what? It gives me, because I on the previous episode I spoke about Survivor, it gives me Survivor, Survivor vibes. Like, it can do its job very good and also got that coverage nuke to hit things that beat it. Like when you think about things that are going to beat Vespiquai, and you've got your fire types, your flying types, your ice types, all of which don't want to enjoy power gem. We've got electrics as well, kind of a bit iffy, but they don't enjoy the bug moves. So uh, it's kind of play there. So it, it gives me those sort of um, those sort of survivor vibes where if you can find a really good partner for it that can come in and absorb the energy of the thing that farms Vespiquai and after it's shielded it, a power gem, would be a, a real nice play. Stu, any thoughts? Yeah, so with Vesper Queen, uh, I built one a while back for Jungle Cup, all the way back in season one, and I used it and I was a bit underwhelmed by it, but I feel like it's come a bit of a way since then, so it might be, it might be a better pick this time around. And yeah, like Cal said, it's kind of got... It's got quite nice coverage for a bug flying type. And it's a bit unusual to have one which is very defensive as well. So um, I'm, I'm not sure it'll be a very popular pick, but it, it, I could see it working here for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I wonder, I, well, I, I haven't really thought about Yanmo and Yanmega and, and Ancient Power because that rock coverage is really valuable. But I wonder mm. if having the... Do you know what fast moves those young and young men can get off the yeah, head car? Wing attack, which is extremely good. Mm. Yeah. I, so, I, go on. 
I was going to say I could have just talked about them tonight instead, but um, <laughs> I, Best I Queen is interesting. Queen. Yeah, because it has more bulk than Superior. And when you think oh, of wow. Superior, you think that's really yeah. solid. But yeah, no, it's got pretty much an identical stat spread, except it's ever so slightly more stat product. So yeah, it's roughly on the bulk uh, ballpark of a, something like a Superior, which really catches you off guard when you think of something as niche as Vespiquid having the bulk of such a fairly... I don't want to say renowned because it's not exactly seen its day in quite a while, but everyone knows that Superior has got a decent stat spread to it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you can use it's a good one to use as a benchmark for sure. I think it's yeah. true. Any thoughts? Oh. Um, I actually really like the Vesper Queen shout. Um, and I spoke to you a couple of days ago, and I said I was getting some Marsh Cup vibes, but the Vesper Queen actually performed very well. Back in, I want to say it was Catacomb, the original uh, Catacomb meta. Yeah. It was the premium kind of like for like, but hard counter to Beedrill, if that makes sense. You had you know, mm-hmm. that, that bug, that bug mon that beat the Beedrill and had the rock types, uh, rock type damage to take out things. I think it was like Lapras it could hit back against and things yeah. like that from memory. Um, I was a DGEM back then. I was using Razor Leaf Ludicolo for that Ooh. role. You've come a long way, haven't you, through since then? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> um, but no, um, I I don't think Vesper Queen's actually that spicy. I I think it has kind of a a niche role here. Like mm, I, I know it's kind of like not Korma, a little spicy than Korma, but not much further than that. Masala? Um, we'll go with what... I'm not a curry eater, mate. So. <laughs> That's fair. Um, okay. But yeah, like... I don't know. It it will have, it have a play here, for sure. But then, now, Yama and Yan... Uh, Yamega... Yamega? Yeah. Have been bought up. Yeah, wing attack might be... This might be the better option with those, but it's kind of... You've got the power gem damage versus ancient power potential buff. Do you want to play the odds? I think I know what you would do. Yeah, yeah, you know, of course. You know, I love a gamble. You know what I'm, I'm thinking as well when when you mentioned the catacomb thing. Like I remember playing catacomb and being okay with my Venusaur being against the opposing uh, Vespi Queen because. Vespi Quinn doesn't really hit very hard at all because of its bulk. Uh, and I remember Venusaur actually beats it in the zeros. And I wonder if um I wonder if something like Yamna, I just have a look now, Wing Attack, Silver Wind. I mean Silver Wind's not great either, but no. maybe, you know, uh, Vespi Quinn's gonna really struggle in the zeros. And so you're gonna have to account for that with uh, in your team building. So you probably wanna gonna want some things. With a bit more fast move pressure to account for that, or although maybe it's different um, than S slash, right? But it's yeah. I, I think one thing to be careful of with the moves it has is what is, this is what I'm getting at is that you're not going to be knocking much out from a huge portions of health, um, and you you'll really need to account for that in the team building and think about problems. Sorry, Definitely feels like one of those ones that you sit in in a matchup for a while, bank some energy, get out. Play around with the switch timer a bit, come back in, do some chip damage, back out again, absorb some health. Yeah. Whereas whereas something like Yan then might be a bit more splashable in terms of being reliable to do exactly what you want it to do, but whilst also being a bit less versatile. Uh, I I also think Scythe is worth mentioning here as well, well it's yeah. the flames because of Night Slash. Um and mm. you know, there's the book coverage is nice, but then one of the best psychic types is looking to be Swoobat, which does, isn't actually weak to book. So having the Night Slash in lieu of the Power Gem is worth considering as well. But yeah, I, I really like the best Big pick as well. I think it's really solid. Swoobat yeah. does beat it in the zeros and twos, but that's easily flippable. Mm. No, I can imagine. Yeah, best, best Big with a bit of energy is going to be it's going to be a menace to take down for sure. Okay, well, that's it. Oh, Cypher, sorry. 
As in Cypher loses to Swoobat in the zeros and twos. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I mean, I imagine so. Just like Aerial Ace is going to really sting at a Cypher. Yeah. Um, yeah. But unless, unless anyone's got any any further thoughts on Best Big Win, we'll, we'll move on to, to Drew. Oh, I'm I'm the second meta bitch you this are, evening. Yeah. I, I, I thought I thought yours was going to be much higher in the rankings than it is, but number twenty seven yeah. in the rankings. Twenty eight. Is it? Oh. Yeah, apparently so. So <laughs> I have gone. Oh no, it's not. Sorry, I do apologise. That's his Pokedex number. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite poetic. Fucking hell. Okay. So uh, yeah, I've gone for a Pokedex number twenty eight. The mouse Pokemon, and that is Kanto Sandslash. So, um, Burrow alluded to Night Slash, something that uh, Sandslash does have. However, the reason it's like to me, it's not the strongest rock move in the game, but Rock Tomb. Um, PvP Steve was on a pr- previous episode, and he hinted towards Talonflame. And the things that Talonflame could do to someone. And I don't want to be that guy that loses to Talonflame. So I straight away looked for some rock coverage. We know Galvantula's coming, but Galvantula loses to Talon. It's not reliable enough. Because Gal's shit. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. How dare you? <laughs> um, but no, you can run Rock Tomb. For you know, flying coverage um, against Swoobat. I actually think Sand Slash does lose to Swoobat, even with Night Slash and Rock Tomb at its, its disposal. <laughs> um, but you can also run the Nuke Earthquake with stab damage. I don't think it's a meta for Earthquake, to be honest. Ooh, be cool. I I just but- think we're going to find a meta that kind of goes down the, you know, fast energy gains, spammy, but kind of stab, you know, a lot of stab moves will want to be thrown. Um, I feel debuffs will be very important in this meta as well. And we know I love a debuff. <laughs> um, so, like, I'm, I'm screaming for Rock Tomb, personally. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff at Rock Tomb. There, you know, there's a few ice types knocking about. Mm-hmm. It's quite easy to flip the Swoobat matchup, which is really interesting. Just going straight yeah. Night Slash. Yeah. Um, and there's, both, there's yeah, yeah. potential for buffs in there as well, which can give you more longevity. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you've, if you've got a Mon running Night Slash Rock Tomb, and if you can <laughs> hit a hit a boost and hit a debuff, that's boosted. <laughs> and it's, it's... I mean, said <laughs> Mon's probably life, dead. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm gambling on odds again. You know what I mean? So, so I think... Oh, go on. Yeah. I was going to say, I think Rock Tomb is a guaranteed debuff, though, on the opponent's attack from memory. Yes, I'm pretty sure it's guaranteed as well. Yes. Stu, you made a bit of a noise when Drew said Rock Tomb over Earthquake. What, what, why would you really have to go What's the... Well, I just think if you're running a, a ground type, you want to run Earthquake. I just think it's such a good move. I kind of feel like, why wouldn't you? It's always my first instinct. And also, like, mm. rocking ground, we know, is really good coverage from, like, you know, good old G-Fisk and everything. So I just think that would work here quite well. Or maybe you could run Night Slash Earthquake. I'm just not sure on Night Slash and Rock Tomb. I feel dropping Earthquake is a, a bold call. But maybe well, you can use the ground typing just to resist the electrics anyway, and you're winning that way. But I don't know. Well, I'm not sure about that one. PV Poke does recommend Night Slash Rock Tomb, just for reference. Okay, right. The only reason Earthquake comes up is the fact that it's one of Sand Slash's key losses if you meet a Sand Slash run an Earthquake, for yeah. obvious reasons. Um, so I think, in terms of odds, with the, the debuff and the potential buffs with the Night Slash, I think that is kind of more in your favour than then occasionally landing that nuke. So, so instead of going for a new, you're going for chance. Well, not chance because you're debuffing attack every time you throw a rock tomb. 
<laughs> you, 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 you've taken out the other part, which is John's. <laughs> the Night Splash, yeah, but let's be honest, Night Splash is, you know, safe for your psychic types. Only. Yeah, you're mostly really? using that as a deterrent for the unresisted psychic types, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, but no, um, you know, I mean, I've had a quick look at the, not the, well, the Sims across, like, the meta, um, and its numbers aren't that great, I'll be honest. You know, 58% in the zeros, 54 in the ones, and then sub-50 in the twos. So, but there we go. So given that, and given what you said about how this meta is going to be about spam, Spammy stab yeah. moves coming quick, and given it's poor numbers, but you must think the ground, get, well, not poor numbers, but like they're not necessarily what you'd want from. Uh, 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 no, because I think sand slash is a bit of an exception to that rule. So, so why, why? Because I feel it's like it's niche. So I've heard I've heard a lot of you know things being spoken about Nido King, for example. Okay. Uh, thought, you're not oh. you're not beating Nido King with Night Slash Rock Tomb. You, you, that's where you want an earthquake. You you want you want a bet? Go check out <laughs> PV Poke Treacle. <laughs> <Really? laughs> <laughs> you know I mean, I come on chatting shit and I do chat shit, but sometimes I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> sometimes, yeah. Fair sometimes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, PV like I said, PV Poke's got it as Rock Tomb Night Slash, and it's got it as beaten Nido, Nido King. As I think it's third most dominant win. What with Rock Tomb Night Slash? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you if, you, if you got... check out. If, if, oh, sorry, you go to. I was gonna say you got remember it's got Mud Shot as well. Is its fast move? Yeah. That's uh, yeah. So. Okay. Um, it's you know, the, don't get me wrong. Uh, it's it's a really strange modern Sand Slash. It is very very niche. I think it's. What? Well, so hang on. Just, just 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 to, just to be clear, see. The niche you're saying is that it beats Neo King. There's, there must no. be more to its niche. Yeah, it beats Talon Flame. It, you know, it hits. But, but, but water types do that. Oh. Water types do. Water types yeah. beat Neo King and Talon. Yeah, what? Are you going to put everything on one mon, are you? We are a fool. <laughs> this, is right. yeah, this, is, this is what I'm trying to get out. Like, you can't tell it's, it's got a niche because it beats Nido again. Like, <laughs> Always oh, gone. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm there having, are other, I'm having other, other ground types. Oh, he's back. Go on. Oh, this is what I was, this is what I was saying, Drew. This is what we're trying to get out of you because you can't. You, you say it's got a niche, but beating Nido thing isn't necessarily a niche, right? This is. You know. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not saying. Oh, it's just Nido King, right? You know I mean, like, like you said, you can flip Swoobat. If Swoobat's, you know, if you've got something on your team that can beat the rank one Mon, because yeah. let's be honest, as much as you say um, PvP players have advanced, they always look at the rank one Mon and go, "I'll just slot that in my team." You do, yeah. That's fine. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean. We we say the same every month. Oh, we've got a bit of faith in the player base. No, we're all <laughs> idiots. <laughs> it's true. So, but, but, so but being... no, like it, it's not it's not like a it's not a... go on. Okay, let me put it this way: is is having a ground type important for you? I think yes, for me personally. Why? I can't really say why. No, okay. no right. why. There's no why to it. Not, there's, okay. It's just more of a I'll, 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 I'll help you. There's a lot of, there's a lot of fire, there's a lot of electric, grounds good coverage, and yeah, I can, yeah, I can but, see why you want the grounds like. Yeah, but, you know, like you said, there's other ground types out there, but I think with Night Slash Rock Tomb, it's very, it's hitting a lot of stuff. It's a versatile ground type, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not like a one trick pony, you know. What I mean, Talon Flame, Incinerate, Flame Charge, Incinerate, Flame Charge. It's not that kind of mon. And like you say, you've got the Earthquake, Nuke. Some people might, you know, if there's any idiots like me that will run Sand Slash, then there might be some Earthquakers out there. That'll, that'll that be, if I'm running Sand Slash, I'm running Earthquake. <laughs> Fine, I'll, I'll make a note of that. Shoo, Sand Slash, Earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, other is, the only reason I'm, I'm being a prick about this is because I, I think Sand Slash is a really good mod here, and I just want to, you know, I want to try and, you know, you want to get more out of it. You want to yeah. get more out of it. What, what, what do you think, Cal? What do you think? 
I think it's super nice and I'm probably going to build mine to use it uh, once I actually accumulate my dust back because yeah, I agree that Night Slash is really important in this meta. I think Rock Tomb is really nice because when you look at it, when you look at the rankings, you see a Psychic type is first, two Electric types are second and third, a Bug type is fourth, and then you've got a bulky normal which typically runs a grass type move so that's not great for you but the first four you're having a great matchup against and then you scroll further down and it's not that good not that good giraffe rig is quite nice uh, as another high pick that the night slashes just add up on obviously neither king was mentioned i think it's just got very nice generalist role where it's a lot safer than something like Don Fan, as good as Don Fan is with its body slam spam and having access to just a million different moves, Sand Slash is just going to be that little bit more consistent because it's got a nice, decent stat spread where it's got a decent a bit of attack, but when you get the Night Slash boost, it's actually going to be threatening, unlike something super bulky where the boost doesn't affect it as much. And then Rock Tomb to hit really hard against, say, something like Talon Flame, which would typically completely wall it into oblivion so i think it's a good suggestion as well so we're keeping an eye out for drew but potato doesn't seem to be working so if he joins us he joins us if he doesn't he doesn't um my, my pick's next and my pick is a great example of why sand slash is or one of sand slash's better than chips um my pick is pokemon number 26 uh right you but i'm going for the alolan right you um because it's one of my favorite monsters in PvP, that electric psychic typing just gives it some really unique resistances. Some annoying weaknesses as well, but the weakness to bug is a pain in the backside. It means that uh, you're really not enjoying taking on a Rapunid, um, for example. Um, but when I've been looking at team building here, some of the things that really complete the teams that I've made are things that are really weak to confusion users um, and when i look at what can absorb damage from confusion users if they get a bit of farm there isn't much and you know you've got a ranguru which can hit you at a foul play which isn't nice but if you can potentially have a something with fast bug damage to deal with a ranguru you might be able to get around it that way um but what a little bit of does really well is absorbs damage from Swoobats and hits it back hard with mm. fast moves. Um, there's also a lot of bulky water types in this meta. You've got um, Dugong, you've got Araquanid, you've got Celio, Whelm is bulky. Um, and so having some so solid electric presence uh, is, is nice and handy. Um, the one thing I would say here is that you're not going to want to run full electric electric type I don't think because uh, ground is is going to be used uh, it's going to be used here and you're going to want some coverage for for that um, and the nice thing about Lowland Rachel right, actually is that it's got grass knot for hitting them specifically true back we'll see if we can get him so you've got grass knot which can hit them specifically or you've got unresisted psychic outside of other psychic types um, so you could choose to run either of those I would actually run it with Thunder Punch and one of those coverage moves here because you you need the speed to beat Samurai. Like, if you're going to go into a Samurai matchup with Wild Charge, you're going to be in a real unfortunate slash uncomfortable slash tricky spot. And Thunder Punch maintains the wins versus Dugong, maintains the wins versus Celio, maintains the wins versus... Uh, Talent flame, like it, it beats everything you it, it makes right you still the mob you want it to be in terms of beating the things you want it to be. It's perhaps not as terrifying as safe switch, but it's not a terrifying safe switch anyway, because your opponent might just switch in a sand slash or a dumb fan or an ego thing. So you need that coverage move. And so you need to give up wild charge or a thunder punch. Um worth noting that if you give up wild charge, you actually lose to a rap and you don't even shoot. Mm. Um, so that's kind of worrying um, but yeah I, I think it could be like if you I wouldn't start a team build here with Raichu uh, I wouldn't try and particularly work it onto a team but if you have three or four mons that you like as a group that happen to be weak to uh, 
particular in particular happened to be weak to uh swoon about as a computer user and also a bit weak to water if you can cover the araquanid with something else i i think a sand slash would be a really strong sort of room for your team so that's that's my thinking on on a little sand slash I'll, yeah i'll open the floor <laughs> oh here we go um, no, I want to talk about uh, Alolan Mirochu. I've I've always liked Alolan Mirochu. I think it's a it's a great one to use. I think it's, it's really fun. And to be honest, I don't know many people who don't enjoy using Alolan Mirochu. Usually, you get very good feedback from it. And I think recently, it has got good coverage reviews. But I think recently we have been running the all electric move set because it's just it's just really good, especially since the wild charge buff. But grass not and psychic are genuinely really good coverage mm. moves. So. I think that's a really good idea here. I, I especially like Grass Knot because it's quicker and it gives you that ground coverage. So between the yeah between the electric and grass, that's that gives you very good coverage for this meta. So I think that would probably be the way to go. My only thing about Raichu, just having used it from experience, is it's not very good if your opponent gets a lead uh, on energy. Like it's something with Raichu, you want to be the one hitting first, which I think is why Thunder Punch is a, is a good idea here. But it, it, if if you fall behind, or even in the neutral matchup, you can sometimes be in a situation of Raichu where you might die with the move. That quite often happens. So, yeah, I think it, it, it's definitely good here. And I think it can, it's a great fit into many teams. But i just say be careful with it, be my advice. Uh, yeah, that's a really good point about uh, being behind on energy. And if, I think if you're going to play Raichu, you're going to have to really think about how you're going to use your switching. And uh, yeah, you'll probably want a team that doesn't have many things that have hard counted matchups in there. So like, um, yeah, it would be bold to run it with, say, uh, but you know what? I'm, I'm cautious of saying something like Nido King because you don't want Nido King to get caught in versus the swoop back. But that's kind of the point because you can, let's say you, you hit the swoop back with a sludge wave because the, because the swoop back wants to find me down. Um, well, that's kind of the point of right you can then come in and 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 absorb that energy so that's not a, that's not a great example what you don't want is something like uh i think samurai was a good uh point because it's the sort of thing where the hydro cannons hit really hard and you'd expect it to be a good matchup because oh i've got my electric type with bolt switch on a water type Pokemon. that means i'm gonna win and then <laughs> you die to a hydro cannon and, and the Fury Cutters. Yeah, it's and the Fury Cutters do about a, a bazillion damage every single turn. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, got, got me out of a hole in my cow, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but what, yeah, I, I think something yeah. like in terms of teams you wouldn't want to run it with, like Don Fan would be something I would not run it with because you've got lots of water types, you've got lots of grass types, you've got lots of flying types available here. And so you can't necessarily bank a bit of energy on right to switch to Don if you've got Don fan in your line because then you've lost control of switch and then if Don fan gets lined up versus jump off in the back it's kind of you know on yourself really um so you, you've got to really think about how you're going to play it within the line to stop it from getting behind the energy against samurai for example and you've got to think about what you're going to run in your line that makes you comfortable to switch freely if that makes sense i'm going to tell you to stop because it's just getting annoying now <laughs> <laughs> going well guys going well yeah uh, uh, i'm just yeah i'm just gonna build it so you can't get back in so, <laughs> so yeah uh, cal i know you're a big fan of charge book and i know drew is a big fan of galv also and they obviously sort of compete for the electric spot. Uh, do you want to make a case for running either of those mods? Okay. I think they're both fantastic. I mean, as much as I am a charge bug enthusiast, I am also a very big Avantula fan. And I think charge bug has an interesting case where it has access to crunch. And I think we discussed in the previous chatting shit just that crunch has the same. Is it the same damage per energy as 
Exeter, despite being slightly slower, yeah. and it has the debuff chance. So if you if like, it's, through, if you it's like super effective, through. I think it's the same. If it's super effective, that's it. Okay. I think. Yeah, but um, it also has well, the bulk. It, yeah, it's considerably bulk, bulkier than most bugs. It's not quite as bulky as Vespaquin, but it's in the Milotic to just slightly shy of Quagsire level bulk. So it's yeah puts up a surprisingly good fight. It's why it wasn't allowed in Ionic because its bulk was actually considerably helpful for it to most of its matchups. I was trying to. I think they're both perfectly viable and good options, especially with their electric subtyping being so helpful generally across the board, sort of forcing your opponent into bringing the ground type, which can put them in a potential RPS position. I was trying to think of teammates for um, Alolan Raichu, because I, not to sound a bit like a yes man, but I completely agree with the point you made. I think it's very useful here. And I think we're looking for something which can shut down most of the bug types and struggles a bit with the bulky waters and has a obviously dominant matchup into most ground types. So I think something like Talonflame could potentially be a good partner for it, where it's scared of the bulky waters, it's putting up a lot of pressure against the bugs. Sand Slash is a bit of an awkward one uh, to work around there, but if you're able to pace with it well or if you've got any spare energy from, say, farming down a bug, then you could easily flame charge your way through it and just shield through it. Um, trying to think yeah. of any other flyers, maybe with... I was going to um, suggest Jump Pluff. Yeah, Jump Pluff is that nice as well. well. Yeah. yeah. Especially since that's probably more scared of Swoop at. Would Yeah. You want you want things which beat Grass, because A2 struggles with Grass primarily. So yeah. something which really beats Grass would be good, because there's lots uh, of Grass types here. I'm going to throw this one out here and laugh at me if you want. A Swanna is on the list. Um, <laughs> Swanna is somewhere on the list. I, I am laughing at you. Air slash your bubble with a choice of bubble beam, ice beam, hurricane. <laughs> it, isn't know. Swanna at the bottom of the list? It's, it is. It's, very, it's, it's, either at, it's either the bottom of the list or very close to the bottom of the list. One yeah. Of the Did you know it has loose conditions to Araquanid in even shields? Really? What we, yeah, but is that really an air slash? Uh, no, but right, there you go. I mean, I've actually been using Swanna for the first time ever <laughs> this week in, in main series. I, I tried to give it a chance, but it's, it's not great. <laughs> no, but it's when you think of the, you know, like it, it's going to have a better time versus a Rackwind than um, Talonflame. No, no, not Talonflame. Then, then, then. Than jump off is as a as a flying type partner to Raichu, it's it's going to have a better time versus a lot of the things that Raichu is weak to. Like it doesn't have to be worried of a, about a rock tune uh, as much as Town Flame does. Um, it's mm, I don't a, know. The rock tune will still hurt Swanner. Yeah, yeah, but we've what's he hitting back with? Ice Beam. Mm. I would I suppose you probably get to the rock tune first. Okay, yeah. it's not great, but it's, but it's there, right? If you want... It's there. It's there, like, uh, there's flying-type options that, that beat fires as well. And um, that can hit ground. Anyone's using Swanner, let us know, please. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind, of, it's kind of probably an indication that you, you've probably done something wrong in the team building or, or, or that you've <laughs> certainly not gone down the most efficient team building route, but, I, I you know, I can see the merits of it. Um, like if you, if I saw Swanner on a team, I'd kind of laugh initially, but then I'd look at the other five and think those five mm. probably really make sense, and you can see how Swanner might fit up, fill a hole. But um, yeah, yeah, it's it's, but, kind of, it's there. I feel every team's gonna have an electric type. That's you know, the other thing. Do you reckon? Yeah, I think I th that'll be popular. I think um, I think we might see a lot of electrics early month. The late month, I think we'll see less. But you got you got a, like a Mulgas here as well, for instance, which is a fun electric type, which is a little bit different, which can also yes. beat the grass. So I, I think mm. I think the chance of one electric beyond team. I, I I'm expecting a lot of double electric teams even, but may, maybe I'm I'm looked the wrong kind of way of, way of building this meta. But I, I was expecting a lot of electric, so we'll see. Fair enough. Well, any any 
a lot of discussion points on electric in general. I know we talk about a lot of electric stuff, and I managed to sound stupid and duck about Swanner for a minute without really having a point, but... <laughs> um, only thing I was going to say is Thundershock is generally significantly worse than Volt Switch, but I know there's a couple, there's a handful of players that really, really can't play with four to five turn moves. I know many good players who just the moment they've got a four or five turn move, it's just a, a fast move. It's just really difficult for them to pilot. So Thundershock has ever so slightly higher damage uh, energy generation per turn. If you want, to, if you're that uh, dead set on running wild charge, and you really hate your long fast move animations maybe you go for thundershock just as a thing for people who aren't really comfortable with using volt switch per se but i think it's generally going to perform worse than yeah. with the huge chunks of energy you're generating and with thunder punch still sealing the deal on the ones that you want to be beating with it so yeah and I, I think it's interesting going back to what drew was saying about how the meta's going to turn into a spam with stab. Like, the, the, yeah, if you're running wild charge, you are quicker to the wild charge with thunder with thundershock. But um, uh, unless the meta really, really goes heavily that way, and you are comfortable using bolt switch, I, I think you got to use bolt switch on, on electric attacks when it's available. But yeah, thundershock is there if if you if you're not. Comfortable, but if you if you if you do drop wild well, even even then, even even then, if you're running thunder punch plus a nuke move, I I really struggle to see the advantage of thunder shock. Even even if you hate boss pitch, but I if you, it's, yeah. a, it's a good point work on for sure. Um, Stu, we'll go to your pick, and I know we're going to talk about a couple of things here because I gave you a bit of a hard time when you picked your first one. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to do a bit of an explanation. I'm, I'm, a little bit nervous about the next 10 minutes. We'll see if that's too long. <laughs> it's, it's not as bad as Swan. I'm giving a bit of a hard time here, so I'll it's take it slow. Okay. Listen, it's not as bad as Swan as Stu, so I've, I've set you up. Well, <laughs> is it? <laughs> right, anyway. So, okay, so my first pick, uh, I was going for Pokedex number uh, 503, Samurott. Uh, now, I'm looking at a few things for this meta. So what you need, first thing you need is high damage charge moves that... Uh, you you get too fast. Basically, spammy high power charge moves. That's what that's what this mess is about. Secondly, you don't want any major weaknesses and sort of four times weaknesses to sort of common types because they'll be around quite a bit, and that's just something generally to avoid. And thirdly, coverage. That's what you want. And I think Samurott with Hydro Cannon and Mega Horn is mm -hmm. very good coverage. And I think you get into those moves fast and you're going to be putting pressure on almost everything in the meta with that. Because, you know, uh, water type, only two weaknesses, electric and grass. Electrics are not going to be wanting to take hydro cannons at all. Grass is the weak to the mega horns. It's a good pick. But then I had a chat and then basically I got told that my pick was boring. So... Can I, can I just preface this by saying it's boring because I, 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 I will sit here and confidently say... Samurai will be the number one one in usage at the end of the You think? I absolutely think it will. Yeah. Well, it's I'm the best proud. safe switch by a mile. I'm very proud that I picked it out and was like, Samurai, that's where I want to go. So may maybe it's the fact that you're thinking that means I'm onto something. But I think like so. I say, we told it's point. So maybe if you're like me and you want to like live life on the edge and try another water site, uh, why not go for Pokedex number 55, Golduck. Big fan. Case closed. <laughs> Big fan. Do you want to know a fun fact about Psyduck and Golduck? They are the only Pokemon that have been in every main series game. Okay. I learned that from a friend. I can't remember who told me that, but someone told me that. And that, that made me, that blew my mind. I know, but, I know, um, I know the opposite to that fact. All right. So, so Scarlet and Violet were the first games that I've had Venomoth, Venomoth and Venomoth in them, apparently. Other than one based in the original region. Yeah, yeah, that's that's quite a stat as well. But yeah, no, anyway, on to Golduck <laughs> before we digress. So the reason I went for Golduck is 
I, I wanted to pick a water type, really, because I think water's just so good, and I kind of wanted that to be a bit of a theme. But what struck out with Gold Up is it's got a very wide variety of coverage moves. So it has cross chop for... Uh, <laughs> I was going to say normal types, but it mean normal types of here. Cast, cast <laughs> form's good. Cast form's good, yeah. Yeah, you've you got cross chop for coverage. Got ice beam for coverage to hit those uh, grasses, those flyers, hit those jump ups. You have psychic, as we say, unresisted. Yeah, bubble beam if you want to be like Drew and do some debuffing. Um, I, mean, I think it's got synchronoise as well, but don't use synchronoise. Mm -hmm. Or you can hide your pump and go big. Synchronoise is unresisted here. Yeah, but why use synchronoise when you go psychic? Yeah, it's not any faster, is it? Does it have psychic yeah. as well? I didn't realize it had psychic. Yeah, okay. yeah it has Very psychic. Nice. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. So um, it, it, that was the thing that got me. And I think Water Gun is, is quite underrated. You know, it, it's putting pressure on a lot of things. And um, I, just, I just thought it was quite lowly ranked. And I thought that was quite an interesting selection of coverage moves. And you can sort of tailor it how you need it for your team. Uh, if you want a water type which does other things as well, Maybe gold talk is where you want to go, and you're feeling a bit, you know, like you want to mix it up a bit. I'm turning to Cal here because Cal is sort of our resident former spice lord, so mm -hmm. I want to know his opinion. <laughs> I'm surprised I'm a resident spice lord. That's that shook me a bit. Uh, I will say it's very interesting that it has almost as many charge moves as Mewtwo. Yeah, like that just puts it into perspective just how much coverage this thing has, and admittedly. You know, they share a couple of types. You've got two waters, you've got an ice, you've got two psychic moves there, you've got a normal and a thing. But yeah, no, I think gold up also is quite interesting because it doesn't have any bad stats. It's a very, you look at its uh, stat distribution and it's just the same across the board. And very, I think very middle of the road, I'd say. Very middle of the road, but sometimes yeah. that's all you need. And I think confusion has proven itself to. Whilst it's fallen yeah. off a bit recently, it's still a good move and it's still a good choice for when you're looking for something, especially with the fact that it has the same energy per turn as Water Gun. Now, Water Gun is slightly faster and, well, it's considerably faster turn-wise and you've obviously got the stab bonus. So I think you'll probably see it more often, but some people might just for the hell of it run as many psychic type moves as possible because they yeah. know it's only resisted by opposing psychics. So I mean, this, this is the point I'm making. You can run it how you want it and just kind of slot yeah. it in your team. And it's, it's kind of, let's say, jack of all trades. Master of none? <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, I don't think it will necessarily have a high usage by the end of the month, but I can definitely see it being a, a hypno-light, if you will, where, you know, if you're really struggling for a sick you, and you're not overly weak to grass and electric, you can slot it on, probably forget about it, and then bring it every so often when you feel it meets its requirements. I wouldn't necessarily support that kind of team building. I feel like it's much better to have something that you know you're getting value out of. But at the same time, a talented player can easily take its skill set and make it shine, especially as an anti-water, because it's a water type with access to moves that hit water types fairly hard, similar to Samurai in that sense with Mega Horn. Whereas a lot of water types tend to struggle with their coverage and yeah. tend to not be able to hit mirror matches very hard in the mirrors. So, yeah. yeah. Well, they tend to have water and ice, and water is this both. So, quite yeah, often exactly. Like so, it, like it, something it, of Dugong, for instance, Dugong mirrors, you're there for about 50 hours. It could be a really good double up, actually. Um, use Dugong to not do go. Samurai to draw out the 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 electric pipe that's coming on every team or the you know the ball. Which will still and the electric type still will will take damage from Samurai, if of you course. know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. But like it's kind of you uh, you could almost potentially replace if you didn't want to run a psychic type um for whatever reason. And you know, when I look at my last draft, my last draft didn't have a psychic type in it, which I, you know, I don't feel great about. But um, if you don't, if you feel like it's not absolutely necessary just because it's neutral, if you're looking to have more target picks, you could. It, 
I can see how you can shoehorn it in to fill two roles at once. And going back to what Dan said in the first episode, you need to get a lot of value and coverage out of. And, and you mentioned it earlier as well, Stu, as well, when you introduced Samurai, actually. Both Samurai and, Gold, and Goldock, you're going to get that coverage. What I really like about Goldock is cross drop. I think if. Yes. You know, with a lack of fighting damage here in general, like you've got Don Pan and Blazik as counter users and they're made of paper. Um, mm. Having cross chop, uh, like I could see this meta going in a direction where Caspawn and Celio are really big. Uh, yes, yeah, ice types. That should should have mentioned that. It's against against your yeah, Dugons and Celio, it's cross chop very nice. Mm. So I, I think something like cross chop with either Psychic or Ice Beam, I, I probably wouldn't stretch the Hydro Pump. Yeah. I could honestly see yeah. even Hydro something like that. <laughs> If confusion falls out of the meta and ends up towards the end of the month not being as prevalent as we we're initially expecting, then even something like the wear could be really strong with it. Mm-hmm. A normal type that can has has the nuke potential against other normal types with the superpower. I mean, obviously, you don't outright kill something like a cast form, I believe, but you do so much damage, you can easily come in potentially Fury Cutter or Water Gun or Bob Switch or something down, get a slight energy advantage, which, especially with something like Samurai or even with Golduck, as we're alluding to right now, could be very useful. And if, if Confusion does fall out of the meta, then that makes something like Roserade really like quite dangerous here in terms of its coverage. Yeah. And all of a sudden, that isn't a grass type that Samurai wants to be taking out because... Yeah, I... Yeah. I did have a look at Rose Raid. It was all, I, I, if I wasn't making gold at Rose Raid, was something I was looking at. Yeah. And, and like, c- c- to be completely honest, even if even if Confusion does stay in the meta, I, I think I will run one thing on my team weak to Confusion. I just, yeah. that's that's the only way I can see myself having a team that I'm happy with. Um, and so if, you know, if, if people don't like the Confusion users and they start slipping up and you start seeing things with two, or maybe even three. I don't know whether I'd go that far, but three multiple things weak to confusion because they think confusion's dropping out of the meta. Then all of a sudden, gold up really does fill those roles. And those things, those are things typically um, that might give Sam Rock a harder time. So things like beware, things like uh, beat drill, things like uh, survive help, things like uh, rosary, like having they tend to hit a bit harder, a bit faster with stab. And Samurai ain't gonna like that. Gold up might be able to get through that. So maybe it's a late month monster. I appreciate the I appreciate the effort to to, to offer as an alternative to, to Samurai. I, but yeah, I, I think you did a good job. Did a good old swipe down the list. I was like, no, 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 yeah. no, no. Ooh, yeah. maybe. <laughs> yeah. Seventy third in the rankings. Uh, I I'll I'll pick my hat to you there. Out, I, out of a hundred as well. So you know, quite a long way down. Yeah. I, I like whale mode as an alternative water type. Do you? Well, yeah. I, what Wilma went? I scrolled up past Wilma. I was like, nah. Yeah, no, I really like it. I think I think being able to spam body slam here is 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 really useful. And then with the water gun, fast move, it gives you reliable water damage to beat the sand slashes, beat the talent flames. I think Stu's frozen. Uh, oh, okay. He's back. He's back. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Did you did you hear that, Stu? Yeah, yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I I think uh, I think if you can. Put up with less versatile fast move in uh, in order to gain the more versatile charge move. I, th- I think uh, I think Wilma occupies a similar spot to Gold Up, if not being a bit bulkier. Although it is worth yeah. noting that Wilma doesn't really have a second charge move. It's over, I think it's like heavy yeah. slam or water pulse. So yeah. you're, heavy you're, slam. Favoring, you're favoring spam over coverage there. I mean, I think ideally you want both. But it's just, yeah, it depends what you need, really. So. I will say a very niche thing about Welmer is it's a very bulky Pokemon that wins a lot of CMPs. It's got a very <laughs> low is defense. It, is it bulky, Welmer? Because welmer has got very high stamina, very low defense, and solid attack. So it's, in the 19, it's in the 1900 stat product range. So okay. that's uh, a little bit lower than Charge Bug. Not by yeah. too much. It's and it's interesting the mechanics of that, right? Oh, because, maybe it isn't actually. Maybe charge bug is high. 
when you think back to things like Deoxys, which have uh, low HP, there, and, and yeah. yes, when, when you think of mons that have low HP, they're easily to they're easy to farm down because dust uh, dust glops as well is yeah. very low yeah. HP, very high defense. Yes, yeah. yeah. when you go the opposite way, really bolt points and break points are the big thing, and in a meta where. Because it's, well, if I've got low defense, it's much easier for you to get a, an attack break point list. Yeah. Um, and in a meta that's going to be occupied by confusion, like if you get a confusion break point versus me, that's far less worrying for me than if you get a tackle break point versus me or a late break point, because you're only getting that break point doing that one extra damage every four turns, not every turn. Um, so uh, I, I think, well, uh, you know, if, if this meta goes in a way where it's going to be a lot of confusion, um, it's going to be a lot of bolt switch, although I admit that that's not a great place for the to be. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I've got on my teams recently. Um, uh, double kick sort of thing, like long, if, if it goes into a bullet seed, if it, if it turns out it's a meta that's going to have lots of heavy fast move uh, or, or long fast move damages, then animations, then Wilma could be really strong um, in terms of how difficult it is to take down. It's kind of like that's one of the things that makes um that made uh Munchlax so good in Ionic. It beat Polyrath because uh it got a polyrath it got a tackle break point against Polyrath. And that's that's all it needs to one turn fast move. But uh, yeah, so that's that's something to bear in mind with with whenever you're using a mon that's got either high HP and low defense or high defense and low HP like well and the Oscar defense I just Stuff. Just, just a little thought there. <laughs> We've got a few minutes left on the call. Is there anything else that any mm -hmm. that either of you want to expand on that we mentioned in passing? Hmm. Nothing major for me. I do feel like I was a bit mean to Sand Flash, but right. as soon as he wasn't running <laughs> Earth, I was just like, "What are you doing?" Do you want to take <laughs> this? Do you, do you want to take, like that, uh, do you want to take the time to apologise to, to to Drew still? Yeah, Drew, if you're watching, I'm sorry, but yeah. run earthquake. <laughs> I, I I'm still unsure. I I think I'd still be tempted to go earthquake list. To be honest, I think also return is a decent option on Sam Slash. If you yeah, I do think I do need return to shout. Yeah, you could do that. If you there's not a lot of fighting presence, so you're unlikely to get walled with both Night Slash and uh, Rock Tomb. It's only really for fighting types. Yeah, have some for that. yeah. Laserkin. But we have to wait for confusion to dip out of the meta before we can <laughs> fear fight fighting type. Yeah, like chestnut's kind of the ultimate counter, but chestnut feels like it's yeah, really yeah, difficult yeah. to run. Yes. Really What's chestnut doing against a swoop out? Well, this is it, right? Well, this any is... flyer. There's a lot of flyers. Uh, honestly, my, my, down, my, though. My, my, my oh, swoop out might be his best matchup out of all the flyers. So that was why that was genuinely what inspired my age pick. I was looking at a team and I was thinking, do I have the balls to run chestnut in this meta? <laughs> because <laughs> it works really nicely with, with a couple of other things that I like. And um and yeah, it's kind of I mean Frenzy Plant was Frenzy Plant's gonna do 45% to a Suba. Like that's fine, as long as you've got something to to chew the uh, the moves in return. But that's that's the problem. That's the uh, Smackdown and Frenzy Plant. Oh, Smackdown. There's a shell. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I might have to cut this bit. I mean, I mean don't forget, Ch Chestnut calls absolute havoc in Prismatic. Is it the I zeros know. that Smackdown Chestnut beats uh, Talon Flame in? Uh -oh. I, I, I know it was a problem, but Ch I remember Prismatic. I... My whole month was ruined by not knowing how to deal with Chestnut because I felt like it'd be everything on my team. And I, <laughs> I didn't know how to answer it. I bet it still beats I bet it still beats Don Fan and still beats Sand Slash. That's what I think. Yeah, it will do. I think it will do. Yeah, Sand, I mean Sand Slash can't hit it. <laughs> no, it can't, yeah. Uh, yeah, Chestnut still wins all evens against Sand Slash. Yeah, yeah, it will do. Don Fan. Sorry, got, got some flashbacks there for small silk. Okay, so Don <laughs> Chestnut wins the zeros versus Don Fan, but as soon as Don Fan shields once, Chestnut's in a really bad spot. So, uh, okay, but like, 
That's a really good shout, Stu. That's a really good yeah. shout. It's a pain, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a really good shout. Mm. <laughs> Coming to a PvP tournament near you. <laughs> that's a really good shout. <laughs> what about Smoobat? I bet, I bet Smoobat still wins. Yes, we're best in intelligence, but it's yeah. respectable. But I, I imagine you give up a lot of neutral matchups, though, because when you think about the charge moves, it gets, you know, Frenzy Plant and, and Super Power. Yeah. You, you want to spam those moves. It's, but it's certainly something to consider. Okay. Well, let's leave it there before I get any of it. Yeah, you've, before, before you before, get any more rabbit holes. Yeah, mm. before Stu, uh, before Stu, uh, Soul for Metal. Yeah, it puts me in any danger of bringing something silly. But, uh, yeah. Swanner, Swanner. Swanner, there we go. Swanner. <laughs> so I'll, sw on the other last thumbnail, camera sort of crept in from the side. So that's, that can be Swanner this time now. So. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be waiting for the Swanner content. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's, what all, that's what we all and need. Hit them. Hey, well, you know, I'm, I made, uh, you know, I'm going to end this video now and then we'll talk about it. But, so, thank, so thank you for. Uh, Thank you for joining us all and I uh, hope you have a great month. Yeah, cheers all. Thanks all. <laughs>